we need to have more conversations to convey rather than to convince. But a lot of times, even when we just need to basically be sharing information, this is what I'm experiencing. This is what I'm feeling. This is what I'm thinking. We immediately, when our defensiveness kicks in, we immediately have conversations that, that if they are not actually to convince somebody of something, it sure sounds like that. It feels like you're debating at all times. And that's going to bring the other person's defenses up. Defense begets defense. Bill Wilson, co-founder of Alcoholics Anonymous, wrote in 1952, if we examine every disturbance we have, great or small, we will find at the root some unhealthy dependence and its consequent demand. Wilson suggested that if we could identify and continually surrender these unrealistic and unrealizable demands, that we may then be able to accomplish what he imagined to be the recovery's next frontier, something he called emotional sobriety. Flash forward 70 years and join psychotherapists and best-selling authors Tom Rutledge and Dr. Alan Berger, who have taken up the mantle of exploring Bill Wilson's new frontier. Welcome to Emotional Sobriety. Welcome to Emotional Sobriety, the podcast. I'm, I'm Tom Rutledge, and with me is uh, Dr. Alan Berger, the good doctor, and uh, our wonderful producer, Patrick Newman. Hello, guys. Hey, we got to talk fast today because Patrick's got to check out a hotel. Soon. Patrick, Pat, Patrick's like he's in the mo- he's on the move. He's like he's, he's like move, he's he's, move, he's, he's cross, moving country. cross country. Yep. I always like to imagine I'm like an elite hitman or like a secret agent. You know, when I'm checking in and out of hotels quickly. Uh, you said that. Now watch the FBI is going to break it. No. <laughs> That's right. No. Yeah. No. Jake, well, JK, we haven't JK. released. We're not going to release this yet. So they, they're they're going to they're we're going to have a. Well, that don't have to be released. Don't you know? Big Brother's watching us. Oh yes. Always. I forgot. Huh? Yeah. Always. But I'm I'm seeing my sister uh, today uh, uh, near Tom in Tennessee. Seeing her for the first time in recovery. Uh, it's been about five years, five something years. like that, since I've seen wow. her. So I'm very excited. Uh, I'm on a road trip with my aunt and her dogs, and we're taking this little stop off to uh, take care of some family reunion business. So I'm real excited. You're a good man, Patrick. Uh, so are you. Thank you. Well, listen, that's part of the gift of recovery, isn't it? Mm-hmm. You are literally recovering certain things in your life, like yeah. your relationship with your sister. Right. We recover from what's toxic and then we get to recover what the things in our lives in ourselves as often as we're talking about, but other also not just intrapersonally, but interpersonally right. recover those relationships. Yeah. Getting back what we lost. Right. That's mm-hmm. what you're doing, man. Mm-hmm. Congratulations, Patrick. That's mm-hmm. another. Yep. Step Very good. Your recovery. Thank you. Yep. Yep. A good birthday present, huh? Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, I, I have a friend who's struggling with addiction right now, and he his, he has a terrible relationship with his mom, and uh, that haunts him, and he's, you know, uh, his head keeps hitting the wall, and um, I, I, don't, I don't think it's right to tell people that, uh, you know, the point of recovery is to get things necessarily, uh, you know, tit for tat, but I do mm-hmm. believe that you give it enough time and you keep at it. I have noticed a lot of things come back into my life, and a lot of people come back around, and I think it's just you have to play the long game. Yeah, but but you know, and, and just as somebody who we've talked since we've talked recently about my my scattered family that Alan so so accurately points out, there's a lot of space in there, man. I I have quoted you on that one. Uh, you know, it's just like I mean, we, you know, a lot of space in that family. It's like it's like, uh, but you know, I I've talked to a couple of clients who do I've gone through that too, and, and some and some issues with estranged families, and and it's like assess what is real for you, and and not and don't you know beware of applying uh, you know unfair judgments to yourself, and beware of people uh, unintentionally applying judgments to you. I mean, because I you know being being apart from my family and, and not having contact with family and stuff like that, I I really dealt with a, I don't know I dealt with I I listened to people often have opinions about it's a little bit like having back pain you know if you ever had back pain everybody has an opinion about it and it's like I think I think family of origin is the same way everybody well I know you're going to regret this and you're going to you know it's like well, you don't know that it's like you know maybe you will but you know and so so what I would say is listen listen with a loop, loose grip if people are giving you their opinion if you haven't asked for it and just take what's do, do the AA thing which is take what's helpful leave what's not there's no one way well you know that that's segueing right into the topic for today yep. You know, how do we deal with things on a more practical level? Because, you know, when we talk about um, some of this stuff, it's quite theoretical. 
And so we want to make it from the theoretical to the, to the practical, right? How do we apply these principles that we've been talking about mm -hmm. to help you function better in your relationship? So yeah. I thought maybe we could um, come up with a few different things that, that you're likely to have ha experience in a relationship, meaning your partner is going to say to you, now, we want to look at this from both ways, both as you being the receiver and, you know, in having to respond to somebody else's statement to you. We were talking about a, an email you got earlier today, Patrick, about somebody saying, hey, can you talk about differentiation in layman's terms and knock mm -hmm. off all this highfalutin, you know, language, mm -hmm. you know, and how do we respond to that, right? How do you deal with that and still stay connected? stay coordinated with the person and, you know, add more yourself or hold on to yourself. So mm -hmm. that's the stuff we want to talk about today is, is the practical. So we're all three of us. I'm going to task us to coming up with a, a question that somebody will ask in a relationship or a statement somebody will make mm -hmm. and how best to respond to those things. Mm -hmm. And then we'll look at it from the other way is becoming aware of what you need to communicate to someone and how best to communicate that. Like, so if you're having a grievance with someone or you're having a grief, so we're going to try to, and maybe we'll just explore one side of that coin today. Next mm -hmm. week, we'll explore the mm -hmm. other side, but we're going to start with receiving. Like we're getting mm -hmm. somebody saying to us like, Hey, Patrick, how come you posted that stuff on differentiation? Mm -hmm. Didn't put it in layman's terms. Mm -hmm. No, that's not what the guy said, but that may be how we air it. Right. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. criticism. Right. So what was your first tendency to respond to that, Patrick? Well, my first tendency uh, was to hate on myself for articulating it in a way that, uh, you know, mm. somebody else observed as incorrect and to immediately look at, you know, where I erred in communicating an idea. Um, but then, you know, some other, some other voices came into the bloodstream. The that was your first, that was your first mm -hmm. reaction. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. So, you know, that, that so that's the, there's two ways t people typically react really three, but we'll talk about that's one of them. Mm -hmm. which is to turn it on yourself mm -hmm. and to criticize yourself with what's been said. Yeah. Um, Walt Kempler used to call that a Northern European response. <laughs> so people from, so when I was over in Scandinavia and doing all these workshops with the, with the Danish people, mm -hmm. if they would be confronted at something, the first thing they would do is they'd look at themselves and thinking about what did, what did I do wrong? They've come a long way from the Vikings. <laughs> They've come a long way from the Vikings. That's right. like, I also think I'm Northern European now. It's like, <laughs> you take your head off, right? As the Vikings would have. <laughs> but that's opposed to the Southern Europeans, which let our, the Italians, you know, you say something like, you know, God, that's not a very good shirt. So, so the Northern Europeans would say, oh, man, I, you know, what, what is wrong with it? What don't you like about it? Mm -hmm. And they start questioning, I, I shouldn't have got this shirt, should I? It doesn't go very well. Well, you, you say it to an Italian, he says, you don't like my shirt. Look at what you're wearing. Are you kidding me? <laughs> you're criticizing me and look at the trash you've got on your body. You got no right to talk about what I'm wearing. You don't have any taste at all. I got it. I'm, I'm making notes. I now know that I can refer to myself as Northern European and you as Southern European. I, is I, I am <laughs> Southern European. My mother's, you know, from was from down in Naples. Uh, you know, they, they, <laughs> Naples. So I'm a bit of a mix because my uh, my grandfather, my grandmother, I should say, was from the Norway. So well, you know, but let's talk about the mix for just a second. It's, it's like it's like because because I want people to, to think of it this way. Also, that when you because you asked the question, what was your first first response? It's like it's you know, this, you know, and of course, this, you know, this is something I'm just repeating all the time. But this has to do with the multiplicity of stuff. You know, it's 
because if, because if I have that tendency and I identified with Patrick where I would tend to look at myself and, 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 and not necessarily, you know, we, we do tell, you know, and I want to make that clear where we, we are, we are of the, of the mindset that, you know, emotional sobriety is about always looking at yourself first. I mean, to, to, you know, this, this, you start on your side of the street, but that doesn't mean there's not another side of the street, but, but, but we're talking right now, you're asking about reflex. Where, where that's which is where we get ourselves in trouble with reflex and it's like where we go and i definitely go that way however that does not mean that i do not have a southern european in, on my committee well you said it patrick you said you didn't say humility you said i went to self-hate you know that that you know you recognize that voice it's like uh yeah and so but but uh, but underneath that or somewhere in the mix too is that other part you, you know that's one of the things i always want people to know this is, is is you know everybody everybody gets some kind of expression in our in our on our committee in there and the, the other part is i can have a part that says hey wait a minute you know and, and it may even be quite the opposite it may be it may it may be just as inaccurate but but saying i did nothing wrong and this other person or my wife if we're talking about our marriages or no i did nothing wrong but she did she did you know and so the, and there's a there's a there's the debate we get into in our in our our, our primary relationships where it is it's lost from the beginning because because regardless of what's said, it's a binary thing. It's an either or. Which one of us is right about this? And and so often it has nothing to do with, with right. It has sometimes I'll, I'll say we need to have more conversations to convey rather than to convince. But a lot of times, even when we just need to basically be sharing information, this is what I'm experiencing. This is what I'm feeling. This is what I'm thinking. We immediately, when our defensiveness kicks in, we immediately have conversations that, that if they are not actually to convince somebody of something, it sure sounds like that. It feels like you're debating at all times. And that's going to bring the other person's defenses up. Defense begets defense. That's very well said. I think I got off the track of, of, of Alan's question, though. No, I don't think you did. Let's continue with it. You know, and look, some, you know, that I guess the third response could just be to withdraw completely and, you know, you know, probably not want to engage at all, which is probably, you know, once again, it all comes from taking that personally mm -hmm. and, and not kind of listening to what the other person is. But we all have styles, like you said, Tom, and it mm -hmm. doesn't mean we don't have the other possibility. We all mm -hmm. do. You know, where the, the theme of multiplicity is, is, you know, very, very right on and important for us to keep in mind. But well, style, styles is a good place, a good way to say it, because because I, I think it's almost like left handedness and right handedness. Yeah. I think we have some each of us has certain feelings that we're more that we are more. Yeah. We may not think of it this way, but we're more comfortable with we're more familiar. And what I mean by comfort is familiar. So yes. so, you know, there there are people like my, my I would say that my wife, uh, we've had this conversation before. My wife is going to lead more with fear. I'm going to, you know, which which is, you know, it can you know, it can be a helpful thing and can be a problem thing in its own way my tendency this uh, this is a little bit more southern european to me as, as i'm saying this is my, my mine is is to, to lead with anger uh is is and and a lot of times it, it's like that will get me get in my way because what's what's underneath the anger of course is fear hurt all those things that we are you know have been avoiding feeling I guess my contribution at this point is to say i think i think it's it, you know when you hit these spots I mean, and this is one of the things I put, I have a little, little, uh, uh, maybe we put the link up to it in the show notes. I have a little thing I've given couples for years, just two, two pages called communication 101 and about some tools with this stuff. And, and before I even get to the tools, the thing I'm, the point I make is, and tell me if you agree with this, Alan, I say the most important relationship advice I can give anybody bar none is when, when there's any level of di di discomfort or conflict, slow down everything has to go slower because you know we all anybody's been in a relationship long enough to you know they know it's like it takes about three sentences and you're fucked yep, you're off and running man and right. you and you won't let you won't you won't shut it down and go get help you'll just keep going till you just dig yourself in deeper it's like and so many people actually people I, i've worked with certainly are relieved to hear that that's kind of normal <laughs> it's like and because the good news is that we know about it is the fact that we kind of know what to do to get people out of it well you know it's funny it's because it the, you know there are these two styles so you have the couples that escalate and they will escalate they'll go from zero to 60 in a second yeah right so we got to slow them down there's the other couples they say something to each other 
and it's five minutes before there's a response. Yeah. They're so slow in responding. They got to speed up. See, it's so oh, that's that's true. I never thought about it that way with, with the pair and the two. That's a good point. Alex. Yeah, no, because there's the other style that, you know, something said and you're sitting there going, OK, um, do you have a reaction to that? Because the partner doesn't <laughs> did, say did you, did you did you hear what, what she said? <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you need a Q-tip here? <laughs> I mean, you know, it's like so it's it's just important to pay attention to these styles because these are stylistic, right? Mm-hmm. You yep. have certain things like you said, it's right handed, left handed. If just because I use my right hand. There's, I still can, I, just because I'm right handed, I'm still mm-hmm. functional with my left hand. Mm-hmm. Maybe not as good. And I can get, and I can get better with it. Yeah. I can it's, get better with it. I can get better with it. So just be aware of your style and look, the, the important thing is, is what does it mean now? If somebody says something like that to hold on to yourself, mm-hmm. like one thing might be is for Patrick to be aware that he took a, in a, a offensive, that is a criticism. He got defensive and, and, you know, and then he could calm down and he could really say to the person, look, you know, see, what I think of at times is that people have so much trouble asking for what they want. Mm-hmm. You know, he didn't write to Patrick and say, I'm really having trouble understanding differentiation. Can you help me? Mm-hmm. Criticize what Patrick was doing to mm-hmm. get what he wanted. So I want everybody to pay attention to that. Mm-hmm. Can I introduce another example? Yes. Um, mm-hmm. I, I conflict that I have ongoing with my girlfriend of several years is uh, different flavors of you don't really care about me um, because X, Y, or Z, you know, right. uh, you didn't spend enough time on the phone. You uh, left too early, you know, the other day or whatever. And, um, you know, and, the, and the, the psychic pain comes from feeling that I really do care and I really do love this person. And, um, and uh, yeah, navigating out of that, probably this. That's the rest of that. You do love her. You care about her. You want to please her. You'd like her to be happy with you. Yes. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so I suppose that like that is where things are good lately, by the way. But that has been, you know, one of the cruxes of our conflict, I think. Well, it's good. First of all, it's good. It's good to get the you'll you know you and Alan. Tell me. I mean, I'm pretty sure you'll you'll validate this through your own personal experience as well as as uh, working with others. Is is you know just like our individual self self in relationships stuff. There's going to be certain themes that just re- recur. And you know, and I always say, I always what I say is uh, I think I, you know I wrote this in Embracing Fear is that the way the way you the way you can identify a recurring theme in your life or in your relationship is because is because you hate it. You know, every time it shows up, you go like, oh, crap, here we go again. And our and the mistake people can make is thinking, well, that means I'm not learning anything. And it's like I, sometimes that's the case. We, I can give examples of when I haven't learned something. But a lot of times it's like, I don't know. I don't know how the, the universe is designed, but it just feels like I'm going to be learning something about this. For me, for me, the issue, one of the issues was was. Uh, commitment you know really really what 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 being committed i mean not just the fact of just staying committed and staying true to true to your commitment but what all that meant for me in in inside and that kind of stuff one of the problems we run into with this stuff is tr- trying to, to meet the agenda of both people simultaneously you know this is something we do not do in a business setting we if if the three of us have a meeting to 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 talk about things we need to do for the podcast we will we will actually line those agenda items up Okay, Alan, you had something, Patrick, you had something, Tom, you had something. When we're in our personal relationship, it doesn't matter how good a communicator we are in a business setting, we will then try to get everybody's needs met at one time. All the agenda items are out there because what I was thinking about with your your most recent uh, example, Patrick, is that the idea that if you're trying to get your need, you're, you're, if, if you're going to feel a need to express that she's wrong about you not caring enough. You know, uh, and, and, and what I can tell you from experience is, is if you're doing that when you should, when you need to be listening to her and understanding and, and really, really having empathy and, and understanding her perspective more, it's going to, it's going to, it's going to feel whether you mean to or not, it's going to feel like you're, you're, you're shutting her down and telling her she's wrong, you know, because, because that is what you're trying to do, but you're not trying to do it because you want her to be wrong. You're, you're, you're doing it to protect yourself, you know? 
Right. Does that make does that make sense? It's like it so comes one off of the a little is, disingenuous. Right. Well, one of the in in the communication one hundred one thing, the one of the, one of the tools in there is just simply called take turns. Yeah. You know, you got to take turns. It's 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 like in in if you can do that, you know, you can let you know, because I I probably have said this to you. I've probably used this example before, but I always say I, I the day I knew I was an adult was was a day in my marriage where. Dee and I were in a lot of therapy and, and we were having a hard time. And, and she was actually, we were, we were here at home and she was telling me some stuff that, uh, that, that hurt her and, and concerned her. And, and, and it was, it was accurate stuff about me. Uh, and what I, the way I describe it in hindsight is I neither crumbled with like, what you talked about Alan run. I didn't run away. I didn't hide. I didn't crumble and I didn't defend. You know, and I, you know, I, 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 I listened, I stood there and it was, I can remember in my, I can feel it in my body. When I say, even say this, this was decades ago and I'm going like, no, it hurt. I hated to hear it. I didn't even think everything she was saying about me was accurate, but what I had learned from my therapist was if you start nitpicking at that point, you're, you're going to be in trouble. You know, it's like, what you need to do is really let her know that you're taking, you're listening to what she says. And that's one of, that's one of the hardest damn things to do. And it's one of the most valuable things to do. Let's go back to that example. You know, your girlfriend saying to you, you know, I've been on road trips before I'm currently on a road trip and on previous road trips. Um, I haven't uh, taken as long in my evening check-ins with her when I'm off the road and I call to check in and um, not conscious uh, consciously trying to get off the phone, but, um, you know, I'm just not putting as much energy or kind of, I guess, emotional capital into the phone call and that, and then she feels that. And, um, there's nothing, I don't feel that there's anything wrong, but she observes that there's something wrong with how emotionally distant I'm coming off in the phone call or how long the phone call is. And, um, and so, yeah, there's just, uh, you know, she's hurt by that. Um, because she just feels that I'm not really present. And um, that is a, that then becomes a conflict. So how do you deal with that? What do you say to her? The, just the battery of excuses. Ah, uh, you know, it's a long day on the road and I'm tired. And, uh, you know, um, I really do love you. Remember that text I sent you with the, you know, selfie from in front of the frozen yogurt place or whatever. You make it, you make a Plus, case. Uh, you make a yeah. case. To, <laughs> right, right. I do what you said, which is to try and like, you know, disprove <laughs> that she feels Right. But, uh, yeah, we're trying to find out what works for each individual relationship. There's nothing wrong with doing that. I mean, it's like it's like this is not what this is one of those things where it's not about somebody doing something wrong. And you got to do that. It's, it's like it's doing it's, it's basically you're 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 not making the connection. Right. That's right. Right. Because she yeah. doesn't stop and say, oh, Patrick, thank you for sharing all that. Now I understand <laughs> so much. Better. Yeah, that's that's never happened. Yeah, that's I've it. never I've never. <laughs> God, I've never met. You. I've never met this woman, but I, but I would be disappointed in her if that was a response that she even had. Like, that's so. That's the first part of it is to recognize that, mm. and this is a common <laughs> response that we have. So, the you know, I'm so glad you brought this up because I'll tell you, there's people listening to this and they relate to this. I've related. I can well, relate to too. this. Tom yeah. can relate to this. Mm -hmm. So, so it's very common. Like what you do is you respond to the content of the issue. Yes. She's saying, you don't spend time with me. You haven't called me as much. Da, da, da. So you go and you're going to now address the content as though if she had the correct information, she would feel different. See, that, that's, that's, the, that's, the, that's the philosophy you're operating under. And, which, and, guess, and guess what? I, I jump in there because I, just, I never thought about it just, just this way, because when you said if she had the correct content, now this is all, all again, all benevolent, really motivated. If, if you had the correct content, which means underneath that, what's being communicated is you're wrong. Right. <laughs> okay. That's coming across. And we don't think that's not what we you mean to be saying. We're not, you're but, not, but, 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 but you're that's, right. So there's, that's a, coming. you're wrong. <laughs> there's a dismissing of her feelings. Yeah. So in addition to missing you, now she's dismissed. <laughs> so it goes from bad yeah. to yeah, leave it to Patrick, or, man. It's like, <laughs> It was from bad to worse. You made him say it. I this, love it. <laughs> now, now the only thing you could do that would be worse than that, and I and I imagine you don't do this, is then you become disapproving. Mm -hmm. So, right. so the the real denigration of this would go from 
she's missing you to dismissing that she's missing you Mm -hmm. to then disapproving that she's missing you and making her wrong for missing you. Mm -hmm. Right. There's a lot of ego cleanup, I think, on my side with all that. It's it's Mm -hmm. all driven by this thing about please think well of me. I'm afraid that you're not going to love me anymore if you think I'm such an, you know, so I'm, I'm so bad at relationships that I'm not there to, to make you happy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. See, it goes back to that anxiety about she's already feeling an abandonment anxiety. That's what's underneath her stuff. Mm-hmm. And then now your response is you're feeling abandoned. You don't want her to abandon you. So you're getting anxious and you're moving her to her towards her to try to repair the relationship. So let's recognize that. See, you when you do that, you're trying to restore the relationship, the balance in the relationship. That's a typical movement towards restoration or repair. Mm-hmm. And, and it's not. And like Tom said, it's unintentional that mm-hmm. we not only not don't repair the relationship, but we make several more holes in the side of the boat so it's right. more water not less well well when 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 because because it gets our defenses up and when in def- yeah. you know and and you know you know and I always always will disclaim that you know women I need women to explain to me if they have this same thing but I do know this about men we do have this thing I, I call the white hat addiction you know that is basically it's like when we don't necessarily think of it it's always this way but it's like even even wearing a dingy colored hat is not is not acceptable to us until we actually do the work of understanding that you know none of us none of our hats are nearly as sparkling white as we'd like to think they are you know we need to be the good guy and it's, and it's like when somebody you know it's 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 like and we and we i mean i think this is true and i'll say this up to you guys and you can tell you can correct me if i'm wrong but but I, you know we we contrast ourselves through our lifetime, we contrast ourselves with guys that are not the good guy. Right. It's like, you know, with the guys that are insensitive. And when we, when, when we get that feeling, or when I also, for myself, when I get that message, like if, if, if uh, I'm hearing what you're hearing is I'm thinking she's not understanding what that I'm, that I'm the good guy, you know? And it's like my fear, my fear of being, you know, and that goes to what Alan's saying about the fear of, 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 of being left, being, you know, we, all that. But it's like, I don't even think we like the idea of just ex- acknowledging our, our imperfection. Yeah. So, so now all of this is happening automatically, unconsciously. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And quickly. Right? She's, she's quickly. Conscious. She's reacting to her anxiety that she mm-hmm. doesn't, may not even realize that she's afraid of being abandoned. Mm-hmm. It would be a very different phone call if she called up and say, God, honey, I just want to tell you how important you are to me. And mm-hmm. I'm missing you so much. Mm-hmm. And I get even anxious that, my God, you're going to forget about me and that, mm-hmm. you, you know, and then you're not going to love me anymore. And that would be devastating to me. Now, just imagine hearing that. It's very different, isn't it? Yeah. See, because what I just gave an example of is the sender, which we'll talk more about, mm-hmm. is being responsible for, for what I'm saying and how I'm communicating and trying to find words that most accurately reflect my experience at the time. But now your job is, is to hear that. Yeah. That's what she's really trying to say to you. So when you respond to trying to prove to her that you're not as bad of a guy as she thinks you are, you're really a good guy, that you're missing, completely missing what she's saying to you is how much she misses you. And it would be very different if you just said to her, wow, sometimes I forget how important I am to you, babe. I do forget that. Yeah. Now, just think with, about that. Just that. Sometimes I forget how important I am to you. Wow. That really touches me that you miss me so much. We also need to be, this is about just basic day to day humility stuff, too. It's like we also need to get a better. At, at just somebody indicating to us whether they're doing it exactly right or perfectly or whatever. It's like to, to us that we're coming up short, you know, it's like the way I know that I'm not, if, you know, if, if, if you're frustrated with me, then, then I can take in that information. Even if you're not communicating it to me exactly the, 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 the clearest way I can come, I, 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 I can respond without being defensive. Is I guess what I'm saying, I can, I can really say, say, take that into to account so that I can get better at that. So, I mean, it, because well, there's that part that's 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 that we'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, I don't wanna, okay, I don't wanna, okay, okay. I don't wanna, 
confuse people with this because if you start layering this stuff on too much, it gets real fuzzy, like you said, right? Yeah. Okay. Is that now you're taking care of five needs at one time, and it, it's just better to clean it up a little bit, just for, especially to for for these purposes in terms of communicating. There's the time for that. Is to it's right as well. Listen, let's you're right. Say, no, no, no. You're right. You're, you know, like, I, I was actually talking about taking the turns. It's like because what? Yeah, what I got what what went off in my head is is that okay? Well, you're given you're given a scenario in which in which the the resolution of this ideally comes from her, not him. Well, that or and I'm also saying that he could say to her if let's say let's say if he said, listen, I'll call you at five, and he didn't call, mm -hmm. then that's a different issue. We're okay. not talking about that. Mm -hmm. She is saying to him. You know, you're not you're not calling as much as you called before. Mm -hmm. That's what the scenario is. It's not like he made a promise that he broke. So if he made a promise, he broke. Then we go back to what you say. And now you start to go down that and you own that. Gotcha. You, gotcha. You, so it's a different subject. OK. Too, right. I just okay. want to say on this one. OK. That you, you you gave me the clarification I needed. Right. Yeah. Yeah. See, that, I see it. That's yeah. The issue is, is that she just calling up and say, God, I, I haven't heard from you as much as I heard from you before. So her expectation was you'd contact me as much as you did before. But mm -hmm. there was no commitment on Patrick's part. He didn't sign up for that contract. It was not explicit. Yeah. yeah. Right. He, that's not what I'm hearing, at least. I so I'm just taking that scenario, right, mm -hmm. where she's saying this to you. And if you responded the way I responded, you see, then you're meeting her need. Then you're connecting with her, as Tom was talking about mm -hmm. before, on that deep mm -hmm. emotional level. Mm hmm. Right. It would be a different scenario if you said, hey, I'll call you at five and then you don't call it for a day. <laughs> I mean, and of mm -hmm. course, then she's upset with you that you said you'd call. And now the dialogue is different. But the point I'm trying to make in both mm -hmm. her when I took the voice for her and I said what I imagine she's really feeling and doesn't have the words for. So that's the first lesson. Mm -hmm. Let's all understand this. Even though we're adults, we are not good at finding the words that accurately reflect our experience at the time. We are not especially, good, especially when we're hurting. Yeah, when there's a pain. Especially yeah. when we're hurting yeah. or angry or upset mm -hmm. or any knocked off balance in any way, it's it's difficult to find the words that will really capture my experience. So as you heard me right. say from her side and then from your side. I'm really finding the words that most accurately reflect how I feel. When I do that, there's no blame. You see, that's the thing. There's no defensiveness. It's just a sharing of what we're experiencing. Now, if I was to feel defensive, I might just say, wow, I noticed I want to convince you I'm a good guy. God, I hate mm -hmm. having to do that. And mm -hmm. I hate that mm -hmm. I respond that way. If you notice that, you can own that too. Mm -hmm. But now watch the way I'm doing this, right? I'm being an observer of my behavior and I'm describing my behavior rather than reacting to it. Right. See, that's, that, that's, that's the how you're not going into defensiveness. That's the how I'm not getting into defensiveness. And that's the practical part that we want to communicate here. See, is that as you start to grow along these lines, you develop the ability to share what's most important to you and what's going on for you. And you take responsibility for the feelings you're having. Mm -hmm. Right? See, I'm not putting it on you. That it's your job to make me feel okay. Right. That's my job. And yet that boundary gets very blurred in relationships. I'll tell you, man, it's one of the mm -hmm. biggest clarifications that I've had in my life is to understand that. And still, I don't. There's still a part of me that believes I'm responsible. It's mm -hmm. smaller than it's been before, but it used to be huge. I used to feel totally responsible for the other person's happiness. If they weren't happy, it meant I was the most terrible partner in the world. Right. And you've said to me before that most people don't know how to love or they've lost sight of that. I don't know about what other people do, but I know that for me, like this kind of feels like being my first serious long-term relationship in recovery. The first time that I'm even conscious that any of any of these forces operating inside of me. And um, yeah, I'm just, I, I've become aware of just how low my capacity was with previous relationships to really like, see the other person 
at all. Well, it's, you, your points are so well taken. I look back and I realize how spastic I was. <laughs> I mean, in relationships, I was, I can't believe that anybody would eat, eat after it would have a second date with me. <laughs> Sometimes I the first yeah. one. I mean, it's when I look back, I go, my God, you know, Herb talks about being a Neanderthal. And I relate to that, man. Mm-hmm. I was so primitive in my ability to understand my feelings, to be able to express myself, to be able to, to be able to communicate what was really important and to be able to tolerate some kind of level of vulnerability. Absolutely. Well, and I think, I think too, what, 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 what Patrick's saying right now is it also speaks to another thing, just about anybody who's, who's in, in this work and understanding that this work is about learning. It's about, and that's the humility part of this is, is, is the idea is, you know, we, I, I think there's a, there's, there's, there's this sort of cultural expectation that when we, you know, we grow into these adult bodies <laughs> that, that we're supposed to know how to do relationship, you know? And it's like, I, I, it's one of the reasons I always say our family of origin is like our family, our, our alma mater. It's where we, you know, forget, we don't have to judge it as, as horribly dysfunctional or not, but it's where we learned you know, and where, how, what have we learned about relationship? And, and a lot of times, a lot of times these are sins of omission, not commission. It's like, we, we don't know a lot about how to, how to have relationship. We, we, you know, our parents didn't grow up at a time when, when people really talked about, you know, our, our parents, I should, I should say, yeah, we're different, we're a different generation than you, Patrick, but it's like, like that, that, you know, where they grew, they grew up talking about relationships and parenting and all this other stuff. So it's, it's like, it's like, it's, it's, is different. And, and the idea for you just to see yourself w- when there's some part of this where you feel like a novice is like, good for you. You know, I'm, I'm learning, you know, the, you know, it's the old Buddhist beginner's mind, you know, the, the expert has nothing to learn the beginner, everything. It's like, be open to learning that, that stuff. And it's, it's, and, and you, and you, and you're, it's a kinder way to be to yourself. Cause if you see yourself as a person who is a student, who's learning, you're not going to be beating yourself up is harshly it, anyway you may you may critique yourself but not cri- you know condemn yourself right that's right that's a yeah. great that's yeah. a difference. Mm-hmm. big difference so look this was a good beginning of this discussion mm-hmm. we know that you have a checkout time here and we don't want to but two, you're not a hit man you're not you're not a hit two man. goons to come in and throw you <laughs> <out>. <laughs> no. it's not because you have no. to get to a certain certain no. building to no never mind <laughs> <laughs> well, listen have a safe trip patrick yeah we thank you so much yeah in, in the june uh yeah. here in doylestown and in uh pennsylvania so you'll we'll be together it'll be fun yeah we'll see everybody next week tinge your life tinge your myth cultivate your narrative with whomever you're with then with glass in hand and children on one knee bring some stories Bring your stories back to me It ain't a crime to be a human Never be ashamed to be yourself Rest assured that whatever you're doing Will entertain me like nobody else So here's to us, my old friends Till it's time to drink the wine and break the bread again With glass in hand and children on one knee Bring some stories, bring your stories back to me